Albert Einstein once said that play is the highest form of research. Well, let's get ready to do some research. This is Teach, Play, Learn, the podcast, and I am your host, Adam Peterson. Before we get to today's episode, got to give a huge shout out to the guys behind our intro music that we use, Brian and Neil, my buddies from the band Cuckoo Kangaroo. Visit cuckoo to see more of their music and awesome merch, as well as check out their YouTube channel. And a big thank you to our sponsor of Teach, Play, Learn, the podcast, Jose and Sean, my friends from Berto & Co. If you don't know what Berto & Co. is, use the shopping link in the show notes to visit BertoandCo.com to see top-notch teacher planners, at-home planners, t-shirts, and more with the coolest designs on them. And when you use that shopping link and use the promo code ADAMP15, you will save yourself 15% off your order at BertoandCo.com. Let's get to today's topic. Everybody, welcome back to the show, Teach, Play, Learn, the podcast. So excited you are here. And today, I'm excited to bring on one of my good friends, uh, co-presenter, friend from the education world, a uh, fellow kindergarten teacher, fellow male kindergarten teacher, and we're going to talk about some play in a different aspect from his classroom and his insights and his ideas. We're going to bring on my friend, uh, Matt Halpern. How are you, Matt? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. It's good to see you. So yeah, you too. Uh, we are recording this in the midst of the pandemic, so you're at home teaching not in your classroom right now, but uh, I know you're doing the best that you can, and, and I love seeing your posts about your kids. It just seems like they adore you and I'm sure they miss you like crazy. So I just first want to congratulate you and applaud you for what you're doing to keep learning alive with your little ones. I, I'm not in a classroom now, so I, I can't say that I know how you feel, but I live with a teacher who's in a classroom right now, so I kind of know. So <laughs> I just, kudos to all of you that are doing the work you're doing. <laughs> yeah, it's not, um, it's not ideal, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, yeah. So um, for my guests that don't know Matt Halpern, tell us a little about your education background, what you do, where you're at, um, grade, and, and just your experience with teaching. So I, I mean, the short version is uh, I'm a kindergarten teacher. That's the best version too. Uh, um, <laughs> but I have also taught first grade and I've taught second grade. And I also was a literacy coach for a couple of years. Um, which was, you know, fun, but I really missed being in the classroom. So I kind of ran back to that. Um, and I, most of my years have been in kindergarten. Um, and that's really what I love. I mean, I just, there's so many things that I love about kindergarten. Um, and all of them require you to be in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we don't want to get on sore subjects. I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> no, no. We'll forget that, we'll forget just, that no. we're in the middle of a pandemic. It's actually like a Saturday and Matt's just out of the classroom. Yeah. We're recording a podcast. <laughs> no, it, it is tough. I, I mean, I know every grade level is struggling with their own things, but kindergarten is the age where, where they need to be doing and they need yeah. to be there with you. And, and I'm not trying to make light of any other grade level because I know all the kids and teachers are missing it, but it's, it, there's something different about this grade level. It's their first experience and they don't understand at all what's going on right now. So no. and the other thing, you know, that I've been thinking so much about not to go off on a tangent, which you know, I can do um, <laughs> you can edit this out if you want, but maybe it's all right. <laughs> is, you know, it's so interesting to me. Everyone talks about kids and how they're so tech savvy and, you know, you just give a kid an iPad and watch them go. But this, like what we're doing right now, to me is, is totally different. You oh, know? yeah. And I think for a lot of kids, it's, it's tricky and it's not yeah. easy. Um, you know, we're in, I don't know, week seven of this. I can't even, I don't even know. I've lost track. I of wouldn't even have thrown a number out. Good for you. I have no it's, idea. what. We're... <laughs> it's, been, it's been many weeks. And the first few weeks, what was really interesting to me was, you know, there were certain kids in my class that are um, much more introverted. And I noticed in this, in this way of communicating, they became more extroverted. But also the flip. That's interesting. You know, yep. there were some kids who were more extroverted and suddenly looked like whatever it is about this, they kind of, you know, mm -hmm. you know, went into their shell. And, you know, it's, it's just, I think it's really hard for little kids to navigate. And I don't mean like the technical navigation, although that's tricky too. But, um, 
just navigate what it means to be on a screen. Right. You know, we're looking into your home, which can, you know, which is not something that maybe everybody wants. Because exactly. I'm now like, what are you seeing in my house? Just some pictures. <laughs> no, it um, looks great. You, you picked a good spot. <laughs> so, so, you know, there's just a whole myriad of things that, that you that you never really had to think about before. Yeah, the emotional side of it, really, with the little ones. That's that's the big part of it. Is is it's not so much about the stuff. It's the emotional side that they're dealing with. Yeah, it's it's you know it's hard. I'm sure you know your wife has maybe dealt with this too. Where you know it's like when you when you see them, it's it's like oh my gosh, I feel so happy. I'm so excited. My heart is just like bursting open with joy because I get to see them. But it, it, it's like in the same way, it's also devastating. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like you want to cry because it's like, eh, you're so far away, you know? Right. We were on a call with um, she, Trisha. I signed her up for um, Club RCA. It's the Ron Clark Academy, like online learning platform. And she was on a call with their, their team last night, a Zoom call with the whole of the club. And at the end of it, Ron was like, I saw a teacher do this online and I think we're just gonna do it right now. Everybody just hug your computer. I know you're not gonna see us doing it, but just hug your computer. And it was cool to see all these teachers just reach out and kind of hug their computer. So I think that's, a, I mean, that's the I only mean, way we can hug doing, the kids right now. I do this with my kids, which is, so you don't have to do it, but I tell them they put their cheek up to the camera. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and I pinch, and we do a cheek pinch. <laughs> And then sometimes we'll do um, bring your stuffy and kind of like the, instead of hugging your computer, hug your stuffy. I'm going to hug mine. We hug them at the same time. And we like, awesome. close our eyes and we pretend like we're like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so sad that we have to do that. It is. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. So right. um, getting back to your classroom, you mentioned you're all kindergarten. I know. I mean, that's all I've ever known you as, as a kindergarten teacher. Um, I know that you are big on making it about the learning. You're, you're not about the stuff. You're about the substance. That's a term I use quite a bit, substance over stuff. Um, your classroom is very, I guess, minimalist is the right word to use. I don't know if you take it that way. Yeah, uh, no, it is. I mean, it definitely is. But it's in a good way. I'm not trying to make... Yeah, no, it, no, and, no. I love it. So I, well, I, I don't take offense at all. Well, the reason I brought that up is because the, the question that, that we get asked all the time, and I, I know I kind of pose this to you, is when people say to you, and, and they see some of the engaging and activity stuff you do, that's, that's technically considered play. Play doesn't have to be blocks and kitchen sets and all that, that fancy stuff. It can be just the things you're doing with your kids. And not everybody thinks like we do as kindergarten teachers that play is important. So if someone asks you, why play, Mr. Halpern? Why, why is that important to you? What, what's your best answer for someone that poses that question to you? So for me, I feel like the biggest breakthroughs and the biggest kind of ahas that kids have are when they're playing. Mm-hmm. And the reason I think that happens is because, well, it's not why, why I think, there's actually been research that shows it, is that when I'm going to say when, I was going to say when kids play, but really when anyone plays, right. even us, right, grownups, when people or animals, when creatures play, they tend to take more risks mm-hmm. and they tend to try things um, that maybe they wouldn't normally try. Um, and so that's why, I mean, I know we've talked about this before. That's why when kids are playing, you know, there's all these light bulbs that go off because there there's just something about the nature of play that allows you to think you know I'm gonna just try that little bit of a thing that maybe I wasn't sure I could do it feels like it's it it feels like it's okay to take a risk right now right um and actually they have done a study which when I do I have a presentation about play what like like you do like probably a lot of us do um, there's a research study where they actually studied the animals in the animal kingdom, and it, they found that every creature in the animal kingdom plays in some fashion, except for ants. Really? Um, because, and of course, me, I was like, well, why don't ants play? Because the nature of their society is they're like nationalists, right? I mean, nothing, not to get political, but um, <laughs> they're nationalists. And so they, if everything they do is just about the, you know, preservation of the society. That's right. it. Um, and of course, like, we don't want to 
be like that, really. I mean, so anyway, I just think that. That's pretty fascinating. I've never heard that before. That's interesting. Actually, I can send you the study. I would I love to it. see that. It's funny you mentioned animals too, because I think one of the things that I've, I've, I've loved watching are, are the videos that you keep seeing. You see them circulate right now in the midst of everything that's going on. Um, I saw one yesterday that was a deer that made its way to a beach and was like jumping and splashing in the waters where deer would never be seen before. But because the beaches are empty, right. it was the coolest thing to watch. I mean, th this deer looked like a child playing at the beach for the first time. And it was this little fawn out there just splashing in the waves. And when someone commented said like, we've never ever seen a deer in this part of the beach or anywhere near here before, but because no one's here, they're right. finding it. And, it, and they really were, they were playing in the, in the most basic. And it's this whole idea of, again, like taking a risk. Yes. And trying things that maybe you wouldn't normally try. And so mm -hmm. I feel like if we, if we think about play as, as something that can push kids to do things that maybe they're not always, um, I don't want to say that they're not ready to do because they are ready to do it, but that they're not confident in their own readiness. Right. Then, then that means like, oh my gosh, we've got to be doing more of this, right? Mm -hmm. Because we want kids to be pushing themselves. I think sometimes too, it comes back on us as, as educators that the confidence sometimes isn't the underlying factor with the kids, it's with us. And I think I, I've felt this many times as a teacher. And before I really dove into a full, you know, play driven classroom that, that there were times where I questioned and I was not confident that it was going to work, right? Or what if yeah. this happens, this is out of control. So it can go both ways. I mean, I think children, not so much in kindergarten because they are just, oh, this is brand new. I don't know what to do. Let's have fun. But in other grade levels, the, the tendency to want to step out of that comfort zone is a little bit different based on, yeah what their previous years were like and what the teachers allowed. So it can go both ways, I think, but that's a, that's a great point. The fear of, of not knowing can, can be. And I also think well, also I'm feeling like very envious that you have like your heads, like you have all, you're all like <laughs> geeked out. And I'm like, I do have, which I'm not wearing it right now because it's so ugly. <laughs> I have this thing when I do my zooms with um, kids, because now the only reason I wear this is because, you know, sometimes the kids are like really far away from the computer. Right. And I can't hear them and I need it like right in my ear. <laughs> but I'm not going to wear this. I feel like I'm working at it's like, you know, I don't like know, a call center. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, it's okay. So, so this is going to sound like we set this up, but we did not because none of this is necessary to record a podcast. <laughs> just like... <laughs> Just like none of the stuff is necessary to play with kids. I mean, this is just because I, I like the way it sounds and I, I Oh, I'm sure it sounds way better than me. <laughs> it sounds great. I'm a I'm a technology kind of guy. But I think that's a, a big one when we think about classrooms too, is is it, none of it's necessary. And and you are so good about proving that point because your kids absolutely love being in your room. And I'm not saying you have nothing in there. I just know that No, I mean I think you have to have some basic stuff, right? I mean, I think what I have tried to do for myself is, so when I, okay, when I see other teachers on, especially on social media, mm -hmm. who, and I see like the room and everything, first of all, it gives me anxiety I, because, <laughs> because I, that's my initial reaction. I'm like, I see it and I'm like, well, I don't think I can do that. I can't replicate that. And so then I think, okay, well, what's the purpose, mm -hmm. right? And, and then I, it, in a way, it's almost become a challenge for myself to see how much I can scale back. So even, you know, not competing with anybody else but myself, every year I push myself to see what else can I take away um, and when I say take away, what I really mean is, what else can I take away and allow children to, to fill that hole? Right. That's a so great way to think about it. It's not that, that there's nothing in the room. It's just that the things in the room are things that kids want and things that kids create. Right. So, you know, like, for instance, my dramatic play area. I do, you know there are some things there like there's a table and some chairs um there is 
some shelving because you know you got to have a place to put things right um and then you know depending on what we're what we're doing at different times in the year it kind of rotates in and out i do have some things that you might that might be really hard for a kid to make for example i do have i usually start the year with um well i let the kids decide what we're going to call it but it's a scent it's like um the dramatic play is it has babies in it like little baby dolls so sometimes it's a daycare sometimes they call it the baby center or the nursery you know the kids kind of come up with what they're going to call it so we the baby dolls i mean i do have those that i that i bought you know right. from the store um and I also had some clothes. I had asked some families like if they had some old baby clothes. But, I, but like now I'm pushing myself as I, as I kind of watch kids. I'm thinking like, well, do I really need the clothes and the diaper and the bottle? Or is, are those things that maybe kids could create? That'd be really cool to see, yeah. So it's kind of like on my, so I think next year, you know, knock on wood that we're back and everything is happening. Like, we will be back. We will be back. We will normal. be back. <laughs> I think I might just have the babies. Um, It'd be cool to see what they create. I mean, that, that would be, because you know, they are, they are going to want to solve that problem. You know, there's going to be one senior class that goes, those kids aren't wearing clothes, Mr. H. Right. Like, we got to do something here. And, and they will come up with something, you know, they will. And so that's, you know, I feel like kids, have so much creativity and they have so many ideas if we just i mean i hate to say this but if we just kind of stop teaching and and let them have some inquiry mm -hmm. then um you know you'd be surprised like i mean you might have seen this i think i put i know i posted on social media um it was this year before we were home my kid, so I, oh, I haven't had it in a while because, <laughs> but anyway, I love Starbucks, right? And I drink it every day. I, I can a, see, I can see like the despise in your eyes. Oh. You're like, oh, like, <laughs> can't wait to have you don't even want to say the word. I know, it's like, oh gosh, it's been months since I've had a Starbucks. I can see anyway, the little breakdown start right there. <laughs> every day I would drink a big Starbucks. And so my kids knew it and, you know, they would always, ask me about Starbucks and talk about Starbucks. And so it got to the point in the, where we were going to change the dramatic play. And I asked them, what did you, what do you all want it to be? Like, so even there, so the first few months, you know, I'm kind of guiding like, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to have a, we're going to have some babies. And then I put some animals out. What is it going to be? Oh, a bat, you know? Um, but th now we're at the point where I'm kind of letting even go of that control. What do you want to do? Well, they thought it would be really cool to have a Starbucks. That's awesome. So what we did was I said, well, what do you need in a Starbucks? And a couple of the kids had been with their families, but a lot of them had never been. Um, and so we took a walk to Starbucks. That is cool. Now I warned them, you know, the day, the, a few days before I asked, first of all, I said, you know, would it be okay? Um, and then when oh, I told them when we were coming and asked what, what time would be a good time. So I took the whole class and they had clipboards and they were taking notes and drawing pictures. And then we got back to the class and we spent, you know, I don't know, like an hour and they made a cash register. They made the menu. They made the food items. Um, now Starbucks gave us some like empty cups. That's um, cool. I can't remember they gave us a couple oh they gave us some gift cards the kids really like those <laughs> i mean they were they were like deactivated you right. know just to play with um <laughs> so basically the kids created a little cafe in our classroom now during that time when they created the cafe they were reading mm -hmm. they were writing they were um they were doing math because they, when they made the cash register they had to write the numbers and they had to put them in order um well even they, the speaking and listening skills that had to come in and that's a huge part of our kindergarten curriculums and standards is you know carrying on conversations expressing your wants and needs and, and just the conversation that started from this i'm sure and then when it was over i mean i should i should say when it was over when we had finished creating it 
then we had a whole idea of like, okay, so what is, what now what? Like, who are the people that work here? What is it gonna look like? What's it gonna sound like when you come in? What would you say? You know, and uh, some of them didn't really know because it's coffee, right? right? So I was like, well, this is what I would say. I would say like, I want a coffee. How much is it? And then you would tell me how much you, so kind of like teaching them the role play and then they did it. Um, and so this whole dramatic play, this whole Starbucks, the idea came from them and then they actually created the Starbucks. So, I mean, it didn't cost me anything. That's awesome. You know, the coffee cups, the couple little things that we had were donated from Starbucks. Everything else in that Starbucks was paper, construction paper, markers, cardboard boxes. That's it. Oh, they made That's a coffee cool. maker too. I forgot. That was so cool. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. They, they made, because they, they, when we went, they saw, they were like, wow, because it's a big giant machine. I think it's like an espresso machine or something. Um, and so they made one. That's cool. Well, the other thing that the Starbucks gave us, which was kind of cool, I forgot about this. It's, it's like I'm remembering it in pieces. They gave us um, a cup and they filled it with coffee beans. Oh, that's cool. Which was kind of cool. So the kids- you have the whole like, smell going in the classroom. Yeah, and... it, they, it did. It was actually really cool. Um, that's pretty neat. So that's like just an example. But so what I try to do is I try to push myself in all the play areas um, to, to pull back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so maybe we have like, here's another example. Maybe we have board games, right? And the kids are learning how to play Candyland and shoots and ladders. And I think board games are really important thing right. that a lot of people um, sometimes for not, maybe they forget or they, you know, I don't know. Um, I didn't always have board games either. And then it's like, okay, now that you know what board games are like and how you play them, let's make one. That's awesome. You know, so let's make our own um, instead of just playing Candyland all year. Right. Not that there's anything wrong with playing Candyland. I love Candyland. But, um, or even like, how could we make Candyland a different game? Exactly. Right? Yeah. It, when yeah. you turn it over to them, and, and that goes back to the word that you used a little while ago is just how is this purposeful? What's the purpose of this activity? And I think you've kind of like, I was going to ask you so many questions and you've already answered them all. <laughs> like you've told me what teachers need to do, <laughs> advice you have for them. But I really like your idea of just scaling back and, and not even, I take that as, and I think you meant it this way, like, I mean, scaling back on stuff, but mentally scaling back, like what, because sometimes when we don't do that and we put and put and put and put stuff here and there and there and there, that drives us insane, right? Like we're- Well, that's the other thing, you know, the other thing that I try to tell teachers is that this is, this is to me, it's like a win-win, right? So it's, it's a win and all the reasons that we're talking about, like kids get to be creative and the kids get to create things. And there also is some, there's like academic things that are peppered in there. Right. But it's also a win because I'm not in my classroom until eight o'clock at night getting, you know, a perfect whatever, whatever you, you know, insert blank dramatic play center here, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, the farm or whatever it is that I'm doing with all the things that I bought and putting everything up so that it's like just perfect. That's a lot of work and time and energy. Oh, yeah. Like, people love doing it. Um, it always felt overwhelming to me. And I feel like now, there's just a, it just shifts, it shifts everything when it's more like, here is a blank area. What are we going to do? And then I, even, even when it was not blank, even when it was earlier in the year and I was kind of more guiding what they were doing, I still had the kids set it up with me. That's cool. Um, you know, so like when we, at the very beginning of the year, so this is like, you know, maybe the second week of school, when we talk about this, you know, I, I bring out the bin of babies mm -hmm. and that's basically what it is with a couple of little clothes. And I'm like, what is this going to be? How is it going to be set up? Where are you going to put things? Come on, show me. It's, it's, I'm not going to, I'm not setting it up. Right. Um, and so that they take ownership of it. 
That's cool. It, it's one of the, it makes me think of, so here in Illinois, we have a lot of, and I'm sure you do on the East Coast as well. We have a lot of indoor recess days during the winter months and whatnot. And our indoor recess was for kindergarten. We would go to what was called our multi-purpose room. It was like a lunchroom and a stage and it's just that multi-use room, right? And we had, we were luckily so grateful. We were donated all kinds of toys from, from businesses and parents and, and anybody and everybody would donate stuff to us for our indoor recess days. And those things would stay in there in a cabinet and we'd get them out on indoor recess days, right? Which was just a time for them to be kids and play. But it turned into the scene from Toy Story 3, like the caterpillar room where the kids were just breaking things and banging on things and running around in circles. And I think that was because they were given so much. Yeah. And not, I mean, they loved every minute of it, but like you said, when, when we put out some of that stuff, not only does it, does it take away the learning um, and the, the, the creative process of it, but it also overwhelms some kids. And I think back, and now I'm thinking back to my kitchen place. There were times in my kitchen set where I would look at them and they would just have a mess of stuff. I'm like, what are you doing? And it's too I much. think, yeah, it was too much for them. They didn't know how to play with that much stuff. They just dumped it, right? Because they were looking for that one specific item or it was overwhelming. So I love your advice of, of scaling back. And I, and I can, I can already think, cause it's doing it to me. I know there's teachers listening to this that are already thinking like, I want to take this away and take this away and this away. And there's some that are probably like me going, Oh my gosh, that's why they destroyed the room because there was <laughs> too much there. But it makes me really excited for, for Trisha. So my wife, Trisha is getting a brand new classroom. Our school is building an addition on, and um, it's a brand new blank slate. And she's already said, she goes, I know there's not going to be as much storage because it's a, it's a tiny bit. The room size itself is smaller, but there's not as much storage in there. And, and she already said, she's like, I know I'm getting rid of this and this and this and this and this because I don't need it. And I'm like, that's a great way to start. And I wish I had that right now, a brand new classroom to go into and just, just start from scratch sometimes because. I mean, I find, so the classroom that I'm in right now, I, um, it's my third year in that classroom and I took it over from a person who retired and she was lovely and she had been teaching for, you know, I don't know, 30 or 40 years. And there is so much stuff. I mean, she there, and I feel so blessed that she left it all. But then I was like, I don't want all this stuff. <laughs> so, so every year I've been getting rid of more and more and more. And there's other teachers that gladly will take it. You know, right. I'm, a very little is getting thrown away. Um, but I don't want it. I mean, mm -hmm. I just want my room. I feel like if I want my room to be kid centered and kid focused, then, and if I truly, you know, I think we, we hear teachers say a lot, um, it's not my room, it's our room, right? Like, I mean, that's something that I, we, I hear a lot of teachers saying. If I really, really believe that and I put it into action, then, then I really have to have kids somewhat involved in what goes in the room exactly yep so and if i'm gonna do that then i can't have a whole lot when the school year starts uh -huh. which i know like i've had so many conversations with people and i feel i can see they're like clutching their pearls like they can't <laughs> they're like what you can't you you don't have like the perfect beautiful and and that's a whole that could be like a whole nother conversation oh it could it could <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I don't. I really don't. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty bare. You know, and th th that just shows that, that you're doing something pretty amazing because your kids love showing up every single day. It yeah, it's have not about, there. and that's the thing that I tell people, it's not about the stuff. It's about the relationships. Mm -hmm. And so, and we all know that, right? Like we know that relationships are what is the most important thing. So if the most important thing is the relationship between the kids that they have with each other and that they have with you, then the rest of it is not the most important thing. And, may, and some, some people will say, well, but it makes me happy. And then I say, then do it, right? Do it. If it makes you happy, is that a song? If it makes you happy. Yeah. If it makes That's you fun. happy, <laughs> do it. But do it. you know what makes me happy? Not going in all summer. <laughs> I love that. Well, and this makes me want to get back in the classroom because my room was, I mean, you've seen pictures of it and people know my room was a very busy place. I had walls painted different colors and that it was, it was, it was full, but this makes me listen to you talk. And I know I've heard you talk about this before, but it makes me want to get back into a classroom and make it, 
make it less about the stuff. And not that mine was ever about that stuff. No, I no, had a lot of stuff. About the stuff. So, so I really, really appreciate this. So before we go, um, these, these have been awesome advice, Matt. Thank you so much. But before we go, um, you all need to know that Matt has a book out there called Look at My Happy Rainbow. An amazing read. I've read it. It's a quick read. It's such a good one, especially <laughs> right now. Read it, people. Pick it up. Um, Look at My Happy Rainbow by Matt Halpern. But where can people find you on social media, Matt? Uh, probably the easiest thing to say is if you go to my website, which is look at my happy rainbow.com, all the stuff is on there. Perfect. So I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm trying to be better about Twitter because it's Twitter is like a whole different world, right? It is. Um, it's a little more like academic. Yeah, and Twitter is a great place for discussions. Like I've learned yeah. that over the past couple of weeks, I've hosted a few Twitter chats with different organizations and the the response there is so much better than just a like, you know? Like, and I'm yeah. not saying I'm on Facebook and Instagram too. Don't get me wrong, I love it. But I love the networking that happens on Twitter. It's, it's yeah. pretty cool because- I agree. You can like it, but you don't want to just do that. You want to- no. You want to- The other thing I really like about Twitter is I feel like you can- not that you can't, I mean, I guess you can do this on Instagram too, but it doesn't feel like it happens as much, at least for me. I feel like on Twitter, you can really connect with authors. Yes. Um, and you can connect with, um, I don't want to say like famous people, but like, well, you could probably like influencers or yeah. But like, you know, like Jen Cerebello, like she'll mm -hmm. tweet you back, you know, like, like, like big education people right um so that's kind of cool yeah i i like the, the idea that um one thing i've noticed there's a lot of admin on twitter as well yeah, and true too, it's yeah. been really cool because i'm not an administrator and, and and i've shared ideas that i've seen gotten picked up by administrators and the cool part about that is then then you know not just a classroom is being i don't know if infected is the right word but it, um affected by your ideas now you know a whole school is getting yeah. to some cool ideas so yeah, Twitter's a great place. So awesome. So visit lookatmyhappyrainbow.com. Is that right? That's it. You'll find everything you need to know about Matt. Um, follow him on social media. And uh, hopefully we're all back seeing your classroom here, here soon, Matt, on all those pictures that you love to do. If you don't know this too and you don't follow Matt, you're going to see some pretty cool dancing going on in that classroom as well. There's some, there's some cool videos out there. It happens. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate this, Matt. Thank you for sticking Thank around with us. Too. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thank you all so much for listening. If you want to hear more music like what you're hearing right now, visit cuckookangaroo.com. And then please like, share, and rate this podcast wherever you're listening to it so others can find it too. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Because you are the best.